Hey everyone, get ready for a captivating journey that will leave you craving for more. From exploring the depths of our world to understanding the human psyche, come join us on this adventure. I'm Tyler. And I'm Elizabeth. And this is the Edible Attitude Podcast. Well, hello there, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Not yet. Oh, I got ahead of myself. Ah, that's okay. It happens. There's a lot of snow out there. Yes. Yes, there is. I don't like it. I mean, we were fine in November and December, and then January comes, and boom, we get hit. And then we're supposed to get, like, five more inches over the weekend. Good Lord. Yeah. It it's doesn't need to be this way. Well, we are in cold climate. I don't like it. Okay, well, let's move then. I'm okay with the cold. I just don't like the snow. You can't have one without the other, dude. That's not true. It could be sleeting. That would be worse, I feel like. Yeah, so take the good with the bad. I'd rather it be snowing. I can't stand ice. Yeah. But who can? No. No one likes driving with ice. No. Snow is okay. Figure skaters like ice. Sure, but I don't think they like driving on it. That's true. But what about those dudes that uh, race dirt bikes on ice? I've never seen that. Yeah, they put like studs in their wheels and they race around a circular oh track. My God. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've seen, seen some videos on YouTube where they're just doing laps with these studded tires and it looks super dangerous. But hey, when in Alaska, I guess. Oh, I was just going to say you're bored in Alaska too, you know? The male to female ratio up there is not very good. Yeah, but you don't know. Do you know how many uh, snowmen you could make with all that snow? So many. So many. So many. Do you want to build a snowman? I mean, not right now. Oh. We could. It might be kind of fun. Where's your sense of adventure? You I always have a sense no, of adventure. Don't. That's not true. Sure, it is. No, it's not. Somebody goes, you "Hey, want to do something?" I go, "Yeah, absolutely." No, you don't like to go anywhere. Well, why would I want to go anywhere where my favorite people are at home? Smokey? Yeah. And your friends online? No, the cat and you. Oh, and me. And the children, of course. Sure. That's an afterthought. No, they're just a close second. (laughs) So what'd you do this weekend, dear? I was at work. You were? Yeah. You hadn't been to work in a long time. Three weeks. Yeah, must it was have been nice. It was great, but it was not great at the same time because it was three weeks of not working and my legs hurt. Yeah, I believe it. Real bad. I don't know if I have to remember how to do my job after three weeks. What? Well, that's not true. <laughs> I would just totally forget everything. Yeah, just choo, gone. It's gone. Oh, no, sorry. You got to retrain me all over again. I don't think they'd uh, entertain that thought very well. No, they just laugh at me. Meanwhile, you're sitting there sweating at your computer just trying to do your job like how the fuck do i do this again <laughs> my job's not that hard <laughs> you said you'd you'd forget after three weeks i was just being facetious yeah that's all i did at work i just tried to remember my job i just yeah. clicked buttons just all day click buttons, yeah i just hoped something happened did it i, I think so oh, praise jesus no i didn't do shit this weekend which was so nice well, yeah, because we had holidays the past yeah. on the how many weeks. I feel like for the month of December, it was just go, go, go. Every weekend, there's something going on. That's uh, how it always is, though, I yeah, think. Yeah, absolutely. So it was didn't have to go anywhere. Or needed at all. It's kind of sad. I kind of really looked forward to, I like show choir season. Yeah. Which is what we're in the middle of. We're not really in the middle, it just started. But this year, I'm not needed for anything, so it's kind of sad, actually. Kind of, oh. kind of enjoyed getting up at like the ass crack of dawn. And why? I don't know. It was just fun. I don't enjoy getting up at four well, fifteen babe, for work. Babe, I could go back to bed after she, after her hair was done and I took her to school. I could go back to bed. Well, so that's, that's why it was fun. Yeah. But now I don't have to do that this year. She drives and don't need to curl her hair, so mom's not needed. But that's okay. You can sleep in, which I did. Good. And that was wonderful. Got some Christmas shit put away. I didn't really do anything, and I'm okay with that. Did we get all the stuff put away? I think so. I think the bathroom. 
I forgot the rug in the bathroom. Whatever, it's a rug. And it's got gnomes on it. It's always got gnomes. Something's always got gnomes in this house. Surprised there's not gnomes on the roof. I don't think you'd allow it. What if there was like a gnome light scene that we could attach to the roof about the gnomes getting in the chimney? That would be amazing. They'd fit. It's awfully small. (laughs) Well, actually, no, I've got gnomes out. I don't have gnomes outside. You got one gnome outside. I do. Outside the door? Oh, yeah. Front door. Front door. Hodor. Hodor. He's just saying hi to everybody. No, I'm pretty sure the rug has it, too. The welcome mat. Well, probably. I wouldn't doubt it. I haven't looked at it close enough. I'm just, I just know I'm always welcome here. Are you? Yeah. I hope so. I hope so also. <laughs> I feel like that's what I'm supposed to say. I don't know. There's probably some times where I'm just like, no, you're not welcome. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's not true. I don't think that's ever happened. Are you sure? Yeah. It's been five years so far. So. I think I'm pretty sure. Not once, huh? No. My God, he's coming home. Or God, I have to go home. No. Good. I'm glad. Me too. It's kind of nice. Refreshing even. Just a tad. Just a little bit. Just a titch. Just a titch. Speaking of something that's not a titch. Oh. So this week we're going to talk about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Have you ever heard of it? I have. What do you know about it? Well, I kind of have it on TikTok, so I've seen some videos. That's where I actually got it from. Oh, the Came Across For You page, huh? Yeah, that week when I was sick. Oh? Yeah. Yeah, they've gotten a lot of trash out this past year. It was amazing. Yes. Yes, they have. And uh, there's still probably 20 times more. There's there's a lot. More. Yes. Because you got to think about all that stuff from the tsunami. Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, yeah, I know a little bit about it. Okay. And here we go. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, also known as the Pacific Trash Vortex and the North Pacific Garbage Patch, is a gyre of marine debris particles in the central North Pacific Ocean. The collection of plastic and floating trash originates from the Pacific Rim, including countries in Asia, North America, and South America. Yeah, we're all a bunch of gross people. Makes me sick. Yeah. Yeah. But where else is this garbage going to go that we're producing? I mean, not saying that the ocean's the right spot. Fucking space. Why would we do that? Because space is infinite. But that's disgusting. We could make our own that, that is planet why, no. with the space debris. That's true. But that is why the aliens are going to come and attack us and then kill us all. They won't come here. They yes, will. No, they visit and they're like, what the fuck? And then they leave. That's bullshit. Happens all the time. Area 51 and all that. Yeah, that's why they haven't been back. <laughs> Despite the common public perception of the patch existing as giant islands of floating garbage, its low density prevents detection by satellite imagery or even by casual boaters or divers in the area. This is because the patch is widely dispersed area consisting primarily of suspended, quote, fingernail sized or smaller, often microplastic particles in the upper water column known as microplastics. Ugh. Researchers from the Ocean Cleanup Project claim that the patch covers 620,000 square miles, consisting of 45,000 to 129,000 metric tons of plastic as of 2018. Oh my god. The same 2018 study found that, while microplastics dominate the area by count, 92% of the mass of the patch consists of larger objects which have not yet fragmented into microplastics. Some of the plastics in the patch is over 50 years old and includes items such as plastic lighters, toothbrushes, water bottles, pens, baby bottles, cell phones, and plastic bags. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. So, um, maybe you'll touch on this later, but how do they get those tiny, tiny pieces, their nets, just be able to capture that? Well, a lot of it is microscopic. They, They have a big, like, machine that cleans it up. Right. But we can't get all of it because some of it is too tiny for the human eye. Yeah, and then like, the fish eat it, and then we end up eating it. Right. Yep. So it's an even exchange. Yeah, but, I suppose. But we don't know it's there. We have no clue. No, but still, it's kind of off-putting. Yeah. Yeah, just don't eat fish, I guess. Mm. Or marine animals. Marine wildlife. I'm not. That's not going to stop me. Yeah, I like tuna. 
It's pretty good. Is it? Yeah, it's delicious. That jalapeno tuna I had yeah. yesterday was delicious. Oh, good. Yeah. Good to know. Research indicates that the patch is rapidly accumulating. The patch is believed to have increased tenfold each decade since 1945. The gyre contains approximately six pounds of plastic for every pound of plankton. This growing patch contributes to other environmental damage to marine ecosystems and species. Now, again, maybe you'll touch on this, but didn't I read somewhere that they've, like, these marine life have made a makeshift coral reef on some of this garbage? We'll get there. Okay. To answer your question, they kind of did in a way. Guess you got to make do with what you get. For real. A brief history about it. Okay. It, I mean, it's got its own Wikipedia page. It's historically a thing now. That's unfortunate. Yeah. It's real terrible. Mm-hmm. The patch was described in the 1988 paper published by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The description was based on research by several Alaska-based researchers in 1998 who measured the plastic in the North Pacific Ocean. Researchers found relatively high concentrations of marine debris accumulating in regions governed by ocean currents. Extrapolating from findings in the Sea of Japan, the researchers hypothesized that similar conditions would occur in other parts of the Pacific where prevailing currents were favorable to the creation of relatively stable waters. Hmm. Charles J. Moore, returning home through the North Pacific gyre, claimed to have come upon an enormous stretch of floating debris. Charles alerted an oceanographer named Curtis, who subsequently dubbed the region the Eastern Garbage Patch. The area is frequently featured in media reports as an exceptional example of marine pollution. In 2009, two project vessels from Project Kaisei and Ocean Voyages Institute embarked on a voyage to research the patch and determine the feasibility of commercial scale collection and recycling. The Scripps Institute of Oceanography's 2009 Seaplex expedition, in part funded by Ocean Voyages Institute and Project Kasai, also researched the patch. Researchers were also looking at the impact of plastic on fish, such as lanternfish. Oh, why specifically lanternfish? Maybe they're in the area. Oh. Maybe they're affected more. I, Maybe. No clue. Okay. Couldn't tell you. All right. A year later, in 2010, Ocean Voyages Institute conducted a 30-day expedition in the gyre, which continued the science from the 2009 expeditions and tested prototype cleanup devices. In July and August of 2012, Ocean Voyages Institute conducted a voyage from San Francisco to the eastern limits of the North Pacific Gyre North and then made a return voyage which also visited the gyre. The focus on this expedition was surveying the extent of tsunami debris from the Japanese earthquake tsunami. Can you imagine all that crap? That's, that's, that's a lot of crap. That is a lot of crap. A lot of broken crap. Yes. A lot of everything. Mm-hmm. Literal garbage. Literal. Literal houses were swept out to the ocean. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, just gone. Swallowed up. Mm. Goodbye. That's an unfortunate accident. It's not like we were just dumping it. That just kind of happened. Right. I mean, there's nothing really we can Mm-mm. do about Mother Nature right. it's just beating the crap out of the earth. Right. Which, you know, if they think about it, it happens anytime there's a, some sort of a tsunami or hurricane or whatever. Things get swept out to the ocean or we into the rivers when it floods. We just need to build a really big, strong, solid wall. Border? No. For the tsunamis. Oh. Just for the places where they're known to. Yeah. Yep, not 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 the border. I was like, what are you talking about? You threw me for a loop there. Sorry. No. This is not this is not a a Trump talk. Thank God. <laughs> in 2015, a study published in the journal Science sought to discover where exactly all of the garbage was coming from. According to the researchers, the discarded plastics and other debris floating eastward out of countries in Asia from six primary sources: China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. Mm. The study, which used data as of 2010, indicated that China was responsible for approximately 30% of the worldwide plastic ocean pollution at the time. In 2017, the Ocean Conservancy reported that China, Indonesia, 
Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam dump more plastic in the sea than all other countries combined. Ugh. Efforts to slow land regenerated debris and consequent marine debris accumulations have been undertaken by the Coastal Conservancy, Earth Day, and World Cleanup Day. So there are plans in action. Good. Because that's disgusting. Yeah, but my question is where do they put it? Where does it go? Landfills? Space? They probably just dig a big hole and dump it in and cover it up. They put it in the Mariana Trench. You put shit down there, you ain't never finding it. Yeah, but it's this plastic and it's floating. That's yeah. why they're able to scoop it. Yeah, attach it to weights. You know, eventually, if they kept doing that in the Mariana Trench, it would fill up. Nah, that sucker's deep. No way. No way. It's deep and big. There's a joke there, but I don't know. There, there was a joke there. <laughs> According to National Geographic, quote, 80% of plastic in the ocean is estimated to come from land-based sources, with the remaining 20% coming from boats and other marine sources. These percentages vary by region, however. A 2018 study found that synthetic fishing nets made up nearly half the mass of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, Ooh. largely due to ocean current dynamics and increased fishing activity in the Pacific Ocean. Which I can see that, you yeah. know, ship breaks, ship mm -hmm. rips. It's, it's so going to happen. It's so unfortunate. I don't think it's pla the the nets aren't plastic, though. They're like a, it's like a rope. Yeah, they're probably plastic coated, though, or some sort of. I suppose, to keep them more... Durable. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know how nets are made. we got to watch how it's made. The the correct one, okay, though. Okay, we'll have to find that one. <laughs> An open access study published in 2022 concluded that 75%, up to 86% of the plastic pollution is from fishing and agriculture, with most identified emissions originating from Japan, China, South Korea, the U.S., and Taiwan. The study analyzed 6,000 debris items greater than 5 centimeters found in the North Pacific Garbage Patch, of which 99% of the rigid items by count and represented 90% of the total debris mass were plastics. These were later sorted, counted, weighed, and their sources tracked back to five industrialized fishing nations, suggesting the important role of fishing industry plays in the global plastic waste issue. Yeah, I feel like you could have all these laws or fines or something for these fishermen, but it's not going to matter. No. How are they going to get caught? Ocean Guard? Not the Coast Guard, the Ocean Guard. Ocean Guard. <laughs> <laughs> if that's a thing. I don't think it's a thing. Should Maybe it should be, though. It probably should be with all this garbage we're dumping into the ocean. Mm -hmm. Predominantly, the composition of the hard plastic waste includes unidentifiable fragments, fishing in aquaculture gear such as fish boxes, oyster spacers, and eel traps, and other plastic items associated with food, drinks, and household items. They also represent a substantial amount of accumulated floating plastic mass. The 201 plastic objects analyzed carry language writings with the most common languages, identified being Chinese, Japanese, English, and Korean, in that order. Oh, I believe it. Well, it's when you got fishing as a big part of your nation it's gonna happen true very true how do we prevent that make everything out of metal then it rusts and it makes it worse for the water i don't think there's really the right answer plus all the nets would be real fucking heavy if they were metal it's true and wood would rot mm -hmm. plastic's the only durable thing yeah the netting is not what i'm thinking about it's probably that nylon probably not rope rope for the nets oh i suppose yeah you know, it's got to stretch and right. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not a expert by any means on fishing gear, but... Oh, I, I totally am. Well, yeah. I know everything. What? You're a mom, so... Oh, my gosh. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch formed gradually as a result of ocean or marine polluted gathered by o ocean currents. It occupies a relatively stationary region of the North Pacific Ocean bounded by the North Pacific Gyre in the horse latitudes. The Gyre's rotational pattern draws in waste materials from across the North Pacific, incorporating coastal waters off North America and Japan. As the material is captured in the currents, wind-driven surface currents gradually move debris toward the center, trapping it. Oh, okay. Neat. If you look at a picture on the internet about these Gyre's, there is a 
massive massive space that they take up Mm -hmm. and it literally just circles and it looks like a giant tsunami and everything's just kind of forming in the center and then the center is where all this garbage is oh but if you think about it that's a good thing because it's all concentrated into one sure it accumulates but at least we know where everything is sure or the majority of it and that's you know quote unquote easier to get that cleaned up Right, rather than diving in the ocean, mm-hmm. finding all that shit. Right. And, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're st- going to still have, like, plastics and mm-hmm. stuff like that on the coasts and whatnot, but right. not near as much as what, you know, tsunamis and fishing shit and right. all that garbage is going to accumulate in the middle of the ocean. Right. And you're going to continue getting that whether or not you regulate dumpings and stuff because of tsunamis or because of these natural occurrences that are beyond our control. Right. Unless, you know... That, like we can put a dome over these cities <laughs> so they don't get hit by these waves. Don't give anybody ideas. In a 2014 study, researchers sampled 1,571 different locations throughout the world's oceans and determined that discarded fishing gear such as buoys, lines, and nets accounted for more than 60% of the plastic marine debris. According to a 2011 EPA report, quote, the primary source of marine debris is the improper waste disposal or management of trash and manufacturing products, including plastics, etc. Mm-hmm. Debris is generated on land at marinas, ports, rivers, harbors, docks, and storm drains. Debris is generated at sea from fishing vessels, stationary platforms, and cargo ships. Constituents range in size from miles long abandoned fishing nets to micro pellets used in cosmetics and abrasive cleaners. A computer model predicts that a hypothetical piece of debris from the United States west coast would head for Asia and return to the U.S. in six years. Debris from the east coast of Asia would reach U.S. in a year or less. While microplastics make up 94% of the estimated 1.8 trillion plastic pieces, they amount to only 8% of the 79,000 metric tons of plastic there, with most of the rest coming from the fishing industry. A 2017 study concluded that 9.1 billion metric tons of plastic produced since 1950, close to 7 billion metric tons of it, are no longer in use. Oh. The authors estimate that 9% was recycled, 12% was incinerated, and the remaining 5.5 billion metric tons are in the oceans and land. 7 billion out of the 9 billion metric tons of it are no longer used. So we got shit on the ocean from the 50s yep. that we don't even touch anymore. That Like it's not even a thing. That's nuts. I bet you if collectors got oh, yeah. bold enough, they'd be, go out there and be like, we found this on the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Gotta sell it on eBay. You know they would. Oh, fuck yeah. Anything to make a dollar. You gotta hustle. Yeah. Respect the grind. (laughs) Totally for sure. Like you said before, there are different animals on this patch. Mm Mm-hmm. No fucking clue why. When I read this, Uh when I came to this part, it said animals. And I I straight thought like fucking monkeys and like coyotes because I don't know animals, right? You don't think of like marine animals because I'm not by water all the time. But this is about the ocean, I get that. (laughs) I get that. I had to correct myself. (laughs) I had to bring myself back to what I was doing. I love you so much. I love you too, dear. (laughs) In a 2021 study, researchers who examined plastic from the patch identified more than 40 animal species on 90% of the debris they studied. Discovery of a thriving ecosystem of life at the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in 2022 suggested that cleaning up garbage here may adversely remove this plastosphere. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I feel like they could make mm, be the same thing. So they make something to. There's really no winning here. No, no, it's a it's a, gonna be a constant fight. Yep. I mean, we really gotta put effort into it to mm-hmm. make it happen. And these animals are just adapting to their environment, really. Oh, yeah. So they just need a place, and this is like, oh, well, cool. Well, I can be here. Oh, this was safe. Yeah. Hey, hey, Craig, what you got? I got a bottle. What are you doing? I'm just chilling on a wrapper. Yeah, I mean, they don't know any, you know, at this point, they don't know any, but it's what they grew up with. 
now it's ingrained in their DNA to this is home sort of a thing. This is where I live, the garbage patch. Live in a dump. <laughs> I live in a dump. To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. A 2023 study found that the plastic is home to coastal species surviving in the open ocean and reproducing. These coastal species, including jellyfish and sponges, are commonly found in the western Pacific coast and are surviving alongside open ocean species on the plastic. So that's what I was going to ask, because I'm like, usually the coral reefs are along the the, sh- the shoreline and coasts. I mean, so, so they're just kind of kind of fused. I don't necessarily know if they're confused, or maybe they drifted out there. Well, maybe. And they're like, okay, this is my life now. So I wonder if they could just. There's a. There's got to be a way to like maybe take that part, move it back to a coral reef somewhere. And put a piece of plastic in the coral reef. I and mean, there's shit there already, but right. beside the point. But, like, until they acclimate to the new one and then take it away. I don't know. There's got to be something. There's got to be. But they could take them to, like, a holding tank. Yeah. Until they get acclimated to that and, and then too. move them. But you're going to, you know, some are going to die from the stress of it. There's really, I don't feel like there's, like, I'm not. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah, I'm not, like, a marine biologist by any means, but. Well, if but we watch Dory, we could be. Yeah. That teaches us a lot. Finding Dory absolutely teaches us a lot. Uh-huh. You're absolutely correct. I agree. Mm-hmm. Maybe we just need to watch that and then redo this. I'm just teasing. Well, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Some scientists are concerned that this mix of coastal and open ocean species may result in unnatural communities in which coastal creatures could be competing with or even consuming open ocean species. So it's just fucking them up. It is. We're making... Uh, we're making mutants out here in the ocean. <laughs> Goddamn X-Men. <laughs> right? Pretty soon we're going to have ship popping out of the ocean like jellyfish have wings now? How did that happen? That's horrifying. Sponges have eyes? Yeah, Spongebob, duh. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Could you imagine going there and just picking up a piece of something and all of a sudden there's like 30 different things no, in this bottle? No, please don't. No, no. Please. That's nightmare fuel. That would be kind of cool. Then you, then something's like leaking off no. of it, kind of like venom. Mm-mm. You're like, oh my god, I found a symbiote. It's like, no, ma'am, that's just waste. No. Continue. No. Just no. Simply no. Huh. You don't want to go to the no Great Pacific Garbage Patch. No. At this point, it's just a wonder of the world. I do not want to go into the open ocean. Oh. That terrifies me. Because there are things underneath you that are like, Big. no, I can't. No, they're see, huge. I, I get the heebie-jeebies just thinking about it. Like giant squid. Yeah, I don't want. Mm. They're massive. Me, could you be quiet now? Think of whales. I don't want to think of whales. <laughs> I mean, they're majestic. Don't get me wrong. But they can stay there. But they can stay there. <laughs> I'll watch people go whale watching. I myself, I'm not that adventurous. Some of those videos are fucking wild. Yes, they are. Oh my god. Oh. Pass. Mm-mm. No. If you are enjoying this topic and you would like to talk more about it, you can find us at Edible Attitude or at Edible Attitude Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. The size of the patch is indefinite. That's bullshit! As is the precise distribution of debris because large items are uncommon. Most debris consists of small plastic particles suspended at or just below the surface, evading detection by aircraft or satellite. Instead, the size of the patch is determined by sampling. Basically, they're just assuming or rounding up at this point. Sure. Just from the samples that they take. Well, how can you know for sure? <laughs> no clue. Right. The estimated size of the garbage patch is 620,000 square miles, about twice the size of Texas or three times the size of France. Ooh. That's big. That is... That's that's massive. I that, mean, Texas is huge. Yeah, that puts it in perspective. Texas is bigger than Europe. Mm-hmm. You put you put Alaska in Europe, and it would cover everything. Yeah. I mean, good lord. Such estimates, however, are conjectural given the complexities of sampling and the need to assess findings against other areas. Furthermore, although the size of the patch is determined by a higher than normal degree of concentration of pelagic debris. There is no standard for determining the boundary between normal and elevated levels of pollutants to provide a firm estimate of the affected area. It's all guesswork. Yeah, it would have to be. 
I mean, you'd have to be hella accurate to figure that shit out, especially if it's ever expanding. Mm-hmm. And maybe sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. It's like, right. who knows? Mm-hmm. In August of 2009, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography Project Kasai Seaplex survey mission of the Geyer found that plastic debris was present in 100 consecutive samples taken at varying depths and net sizes along a path of 1,700 miles through the patch. The survey found that although the patch contains large pieces, it is on the whole made up of smaller items that increase in concentration toward the Geyer Center, and these confetti-like pieces that are visible just beneath the surface suggest the affected area may be much smaller. 2009 data collected from the Pacific Albatross populations suggested the presence of two distinct debris zones. Oh, two. In March of 2018, the Ocean Cleanup published a paper summarizing their findings from the Mega and Aerial Expeditions from 2015 and 2016, respectively. In 2015, the organization crossed the Great Pacific Garbage Patch with 30 vessels to make observations and take samples with survey nets. They collected a total of 1.2 million pieces, which they counted and categorized into their respective size classes. In order to also account for the larger more, but more rare debris, they also overflew the patch in 2016 with an aircraft equipped with LiDAR sensors. The findings from the two expeditions found that the patch covers 0.62 million square miles with a concentration of 57 to 571 pounds per square mile. Oh my god. They estimate an 80,000 metric tons in the patch with 1.8 trillion plastic pieces, out of which 92% of the mass is to be found in objects larger than 3 sixteenths of an inch. So that shit is tiny. It is. I mean, it's real small. Wow. Again, I don't know. How, how do I get that out of the ocean? My whole thing I got from that is they categorized 1.2 million pieces. I would have been, I would have noped out of there. <laughs> been like, I'm not doing that. There's people that enjoy that. That's why they do that Counting for a job. garbage? We'll just... What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to count garbage for that's a living. That's not what. <laughs> that's not what it is. They like, to, you know, they like information. I get that, but how long do you think that took? Especially if pieces are super tiny, if they're just going like a. Me- I'm sure there's a way that they counted it. They got a tape measure, just one piece at a time. It's probably three so. people the whole th- time. <laughs> that would take so long. This is direct from the NOAA or the National Oceanic and atmospheric administration okay they have stated that while the great pacific garbage patch is a term often used by the media it does not paint an an accurate picture of marine debris problem in the north pacific ocean the name pacific garbage patch has led many to believe that this area is a large and continuous patch of easily visible marine debris items such as bottles and other litter akin to a literal island of trash that should be visible with satellite or aerial photographs. This, however, is not the case. So basically what I'm getting from this is there are, yes, there's some big pieces out there for sure, but the majority of it are microplastics. Yep, super small. All right. Super small, very concentrated. Because that last statement's very true because in my mind when you say the Pacific whatever, I think of all this great big huge things floating. Yeah, that's what I thought it was going to be too. Yeah. But it's, even though it's big, Mm Mm-hmm. It's real tiny shit. Yeah, majority of it's the tiny stuff. Right. Gotcha. Okay. In a 2001 study, researchers found concentrations of plastic particles at 866,000 square miles with a mean mass of 29 pounds per square mile. The overall concentration of plastics was seven times greater than the concentration of zooplankton in many of the sampled areas. Samples collected deeper in the water column found much lower concentrations of plastic particles. In 2012, researchers Goldstein, Rosenberg, and Chang found that microplastic concentrations in the gyre had increased by two orders of magnitude in the prior four decades. Oh, wow. So it's increased quite a bit. It sure has. There's microplastics in everything, though. Yeah, it's true. If you want to avoid uh, cancer, good luck. <laughs> That's just inevitable. Really is. 
So I got some fun, not so fun facts. Oh boy. Okay. Here's your first fun fact. Okay. So you know how we talked about Charles J. Moore? Yeah. He actually coined the name the Great Pacific Garbage Patch okay. when traveling back and he found it. Sure. So fun fact, not so fun. Or that was a fun fact. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Good old Chuck. Another fact is in total, there are five guyers that collect marine debris. Oh. A lot of attention has been given to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, but the North Pacific Geyer is not the only Geyer where plastics accumulate. Five different Geyers shape the currents of the ocean and create predictable final destinations for the plastics, which is good. Right. Because like I said before, or like we said before, at least we know where it is. Right, exactly. There are the North and South Geyers of, in the Pacific Ocean, as well as the North and South Geyers in the Atlantic Ocean, and the fifth Geyer circulates in the southern part of the Indian Ocean. Okay, so the Atlantic ones, are they just not as big? Right. Okay. They're big, but the Pacific, the, great, the mm-hmm. North Pacific is the biggest one. It makes sense. It, it just does to me, because right. of, you know, all the crap that goes on. In 2013, of the roughly 297 million tons of plastic floating on the surface of the ocean, the distribution across the Gaia regions are as follows, or was as follows. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been an update since. Since when again? 2013. Oh, well, that's 11 years ago now. So in 2013, Mm -hmm. the North Pacific Gaia takes up 36%. The Indian Ocean makes up 22%. Then why aren't we talking about that one? Because the North Pacific one was the biggest one. I get it, but still 22% is a lot. Yeah. The okay. North Atlantic is 21%. The South Pacific is 8%. The South Atlantic is 4.5%. And the remaining 8.5% stayed in the Mediterranean Sea. Oh, that's weird. According to a recent scientific study, roughly 90% of the plastic in the ocean comes from just one of ten rivers in the world, five of which pass through China. Mm. These are as follows. The Yangtze River, with 1.5 million tons, is Asia's longest river, and this Chinese river flows to the southern part of the Yellow Sea, which accesses the Pacific. Okay, so why can't they put some sort of a weird net at the end? Because you know it doesn't just open out there's probably a way to capture some of that they have some i i know i have seen videos Mm -hmm. of these nets in these rivers Mm -hmm. but you can't stop all of it but i feel like you could stop some of it yeah yeah the majority of it all the big shit but all the little shit gets through well sure but i mean i feel like at least if you get the big stuff stopped Maybe the little stuff will accumulate in with the big stuff and we can get, I don't know, you just have to someone monitoring it daily because you know it's going to be. I suppose we got to think of the fish that are in there too. You can't trap the fish in the plastic even right. though they're swimming with the plastic. I get that, but you also have somebody continuously monitoring it. That's their job. That's a hell of a job. Just have a team dedicated to maintaining that. No, just one dude. He can do it. Yeah. <laughs> the Indus River which accumulates 160,000 tons, this river enters the Indian Ocean from Pakistan. The Yellow River, which accumulates 120,000 tons, is the second longest river in China, which leads to the Pacific via the Yellow Sea. The Hai He River, which accumulates 92,000 tons, is a river system in the northern part of China that flows into the Bohai Sea. The Nile River, which is the longest river in the world, which flows through Egypt to reach the Mediterranean Sea, accumulates 85,000 tons. The Ganges River, which accumulates 73,000 tons, is a river basin that flows out from the Bay of Bengal, reaching the Indian Ocean. The Pearl River, which accumulates 53,000 tons, flows through China to the South China Sea. The Amur River, which accumulates 38,000 tons, forms the part of the border between Russia and China. The Niger River, which accumulates 35,000 tons, flows through West Africa to the Gulf of Guinea on the coast of Nigeria. And finally, the Mekong River, which accumulates 33,000 tons, flows through Southeast Asia past Laos, Thailand, and Cambodia, emptying into the South China Sea. The study correlated the incident of mismanaged plastic waste 
to the high level of inflows of plastic and other debris in the oceans. So the Mississippi River doesn't make that cut? No. I'm surprised. Well, like I said, roughly 90% of the plastic in the ocean comes from just one of ten rivers in the world, Mm -hmm. five of which pass through China. No, I understand. I heard what you said. But, you know, it's always America that's the problem. It's always America that's the problem. But in this case, it's China. (laughs) Which would make sense because they got more people per capita than we do. They sure do. Like, way more. Yes. They are overcrowded. Like a motherfucker. Them and Japan. I feel like with China, they could just spread out. But they're all just in the cities. I guess, yeah. Well, the cities where everything is. And it seems very mountainous. There probably is really not much, you know, where they can go. You've seen those videos? They all go to, like, these gas stations and stuff. I don't think that's China. Convenience store. I think that's, I don't know, Vietnam or Thailand. Which would make sense because they're on the list. Right. It's one in a different Asian country. It's, it's That's not China. Something like it. The food looks great. Except for that Indian street food. That looks fucking weird. Yeah. Please don't put your hands in my food. Yeah, that was odd. It was disgusting. <laughs> good news, though. Oh, good. There yeah. is a cleanup project. Mm-hmm. A fairly big one. Yes. So in 2009... Ocean Voyages Institute removed over 4.5 tons of plastic during the initial Project Kasai cleanup initiative while testing a variety of cleanup prototype devices. In 2019, over a 25-day expedition, Ocean Voyages Institute set the record for the largest cleanup in the garbage patch, removing over 40 metric tons of plastic from the ocean. Wow. In 2020, over the course of two expeditions, Ocean Voyages Institute again set the record for the largest cleanup removing of 150 tons of plastic from the ocean. The first 45-day expedition removed 93 tons of plastic, and the second expedition removed 61 tons of plastic from the garbage patch. In 2022, over the course of two summer expeditions, Ocean Voyages Institute removed 134 tons of plastic ghost nets, consumer items, and mixed plastic debris from the garbage patch. That is great news. So they're doing work. They are. In September 2018, the first collection system was deployed to the gyre to begin the collection task. This initial run of the Ocean Cleanup Project started towing its Ocean Cleanup System 001 from San Francisco to the trial site some 280 miles away. The initial trial of the Ocean Cleanup System 001 ran for four months, and provided the research team with valuable information relevant to the designing of the system 001B. They didn't want to make it 002, so they just put a B after it. Yeah, makes it simple. (sighs) Sure. Where'd A go? A was just the initial trial run? Correct. I suppose. In 2021, the Ocean Cleanup collected 28 tons of plastic using their system 002. So they've fucking upgraded from the 001B, huh? Apparently. This is a different revision. That's bullshit! The mission started in July 2021 and concluded in October of the same year. In July 2022, the Ocean Cleanup announced that they had reached a milestone of removing the first 100 tons of plastic from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch using System 002 and announced its transition to System 03, which is claimed to be 10 times as effective as its predecessor. That's awesome. Yeah, upgrading, moving yeah, forward like it. you should. Mm-hmm. The group expects larger nets to enable it starting in 2024 to remove garbage faster than it is being deposited and to clean up the entire patch within 10 years. That's a great goal. That's a great goal. It. That's just the one patch though. Yeah, but still, that's a start. That's a huge thing. Yeah. Especially if it, you know, took 50 years to mm-hmm. accumulate all this shit. Right. Let's say they go to the next patch and that takes five years. Mm-hmm. And then that one's not as, b- the Pacific Garbage Patch isn't as big anymore. Right. So, but at the same time, are they destroying an ecosystem? Like, what's going on? I feel like the microplastics is more of a detriment than ruining a little bit of an ecosystem that can be, you know, I don't think they're going to like make any wildlife extinct. I'm sure they've done their enough research to know that this the good outweighs the bad. 
Sacrifices must be made. Correct. Especially if you can, like you said, relocate these yeah. species. There's got to be a way. There's always a way. Yes. We just got to find it. Correct. And that's why they're paid lots of money. And we're not. Sure. That's why they make the big bucks. Correct. Because they do the work. I don't want to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll clean up garbage every once in a while here and there, you know, whatever. Right. But I ain't going into the open ocean with that shit. No, I can leave it to other people that want to do that. Yeah. I'm okay yeah, with that. Good for them. Yes. I mean, it is dead center on the ocean. <laughs> you ain't seen anything for miles. Yeah, no thank you. But that's all I got, dear. That was very informative. That's all I got. Yeah, it was very, very. It's a very interesting read. Yeah. I did not expect it to not be seen from space. Yeah, that kind of blows my mind. It's just because it's plastic and you really just can't pick it up? It, or because it's so small? or I don't know, but it's... I mean, if you can see the United States and Texas from space, but you can't see something bigger than Texas from space. Yeah. It's got to it's gotta do with the plastics. Got to And, be. you know, not picking up on, you know, radar or whatever. Sure. Interesting. I bet you if they had the James Hub telescope out there, they could see it. Oh? Why would you say that? That thing can see star systems from millions of miles away. True. You could see the Great Pacific Garbage Patch real easy. Why would they want something to focus on the Earth? Why not? Why, though? I don't know. See how we're doing. <laughs> how's, how's everybody doing? That's why we have satellites. Correct. Mm-hmm. 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 Speaking of satellites, you ever see one in the sky? Yeah, I see the ISS go by all the time. Well, that's not a satellite, but still. The International Space Station. You see that? Yeah, you see the Yeah, it's the lights and it, it just, it's just going by. I'll show you next time if we're outside. I've seen a satellite. Oh, I have. Just like cruise across the sky. That that's cool. I probably have too. Just I know. mean, it's it's real fast. It mm -hmm. like zoop, and it's gone. Zoop. It does the thing too. Zoop. Does it? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> But, I mean, you can see it because it blinks sure. every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And you can vaguely make out the outline of it. Mm -hmm. Needle mosquito. Needle mosquito. Yeah, that's all I got. I learned a lot this evening. I learned a lot reading about it. I thank you for your contribution. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for coming along. You're welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you all. Very much so. And as always... I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Tyler. And this is the Edible Attitude Podcast. Mm -hmm.